Welcome to this week's edition of Threadhead TV. Thanks for watching. I'm Jude Bell. This week we're taking a brand new beautiful Brooks Brothers t-shirt with a gorgeous sheen and we're turning it into a work of art with hexagons. So I have been a sewist for over 20 years. This is my first attempt ever at a placket. So I would recommend Melly Sew. She has a great YouTube tutorial on this where I learned how to make a placket. And I also watch Schwinn and Schwinn. I will put the links below to their videos. To get started, fold your shirt in half and press to make a crease down the center front. Double check that it looks exactly centered when you're done. I needed to refold mine to match the shoulder and side seams to make sure mine was just right. Your placket fabric needs to be five times the width of your desired placket plus a half an inch for seam allowances. To determine the length of your placket fabric, you need to figure out how long you would like your placket to be, and then add a one inch seam allowance for the top, an additional half inch for the bottom seam allowance, and then you're also going to add another width of your final placket. So in my case, I want a 3 fourths inch placket wide, and so my total additional on the length is two and a fourth inches. So my total length of placket fabric was eight inches. Once you've established the size of your placket fabric, fold in one fourth of an inch on each side of your fabric and press. Next, you're going to press five sections the width of your placket. So if you determined your placket was going to be one inch wide, each of your five sections pressed would be one inch wide. Mine are three-fourths inches wide, and I'm using my seam gauge to keep me on track. Next, press your top and bottom seam allowances. My top allowance is one inch, and my bottom allowance will be one and a quarter inches because I'm adding the width of my final placket, which is 3 fourths inches, plus the half inch seam allowance that I will need. And this will make more sense later on. So an inch at the top and one and a quarter inches at the bottom. Place the exact center of the placket, matching the center pressed line that you made on the front of your shirt putting right sides together. Once you have your placket fabric pinned in the right place, mark the rectangle that you will be sewing so that you can see the exact lines you need to follow while you're sewing. My lines were too light, so I recommend something darker that's washable. After straight stitching on top of your rectangle placket lines, your finished product will look like this on the back side. Carefully cut down the center of your newly sewn rectangle, stopping a half an inch away from the end. At this half inch stopping point, make your Y shape by snipping into the corners of your rectangle without snipping your stitching line. Fold back each side of your placket and iron. My garment is already constructed, and so this piece at the top I can fold down. You just have to make sure that everything is inside and there's no raw edges that are going to peek out underneath. I just wanted you to see how closely I am sewing 
to the edge of the seam, just barely on the white side. White side all the way along, here and down, and then back stretched all the way back. So this inside placket is much prettier than the stepsister here. So this is the one I'm going to want laying close to my body that won't show. And this is the one that will be fine to flip open because it looks beautiful. Now we're going to figure out the bottom part of the placket. The final step in the placket is finishing off the bottom. On the right side of the t-shirt, sew with the right side up a box underneath the placket as shown with an X in the middle. Keep your placket pinned shut until your project is done. Now on to the hexagons. Iron your steam seam on the back and trace and cut them out. Lay out your desired pattern. In the end, I decided that I did not want mine to be symmetrical on both sides in order to add visual interest. I also decided that I did not like the stark white look of the muslin color, and so I tea dyed my hexagons. You can see the difference here, before and after. I was contemplating using an, an all different kind of fabric and cutting my hexagons all over again, but in the end, the tea dyeing did the trick. It was a perfect solution, and I love the results. If you're interested in tea dyeing any fabric, it's really simple, and I will put the recipe down below. The inspiration for my hexagon shirt came from a home store where I saw this pattern on a pillow. It was a brown pillow with muslin hexagons, and I loved it. And I especially loved it because the edges of each hexagon were a little bit frayed, and that's exactly the result that I will get once this shirt is washed a few times. Now you are ready to sew on each hexagon. Use a universal needle, set the needle to stay down in the fabric, straight stitch, and put the stitch width higher or longer than the standard setting. If you notice on the back side of your hexagons that your thread stitching looks squiggly, it means that your thread tension needs to be adjusted to a higher setting, which is tighter. I was thrilled with how my project turned out, and I hope you will give it a try. With the placket on a t-shirt or the hexagons, let me know down below. If you do any variation of this project, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for visiting Threadhead TV. I'm Jude Bell. Come back again for more great projects.